Bye, everybody. It's Grampy Campy. And today, we're going to make some pickled cauliflower. And some of it's going to be um, filled pickles, and others is just going to be pickled. And I'll see what else I got to throw into it. But that's that's the, um, the plan. And um, a lot of people don't realize the days of the boiling water bath are pretty much obsolete. Um, I use my pressure canner here. This one does seven quarts at a time. And I use this thing, oh my gosh, 20 years at least. And I do my tomatoes, my dill pickles, everything using the pressure canner. I have boiling water bath yeah but you don't really need it anymore eat my tomatoes and everything you just got to adjust the time but I've never had anything spoil everything always sealed so it comes out great so be right back in a minute after I get the all the stuff prepped up and everything okay and these are Michigan cauliflower. And see how big they are? Look at that. I mean, compared to my hands, they're huge. I got two of them I'm going to do today. In my canner. In quart jars. Oh, here you go, everybody. Those two big heads of oh, cauliflower. All cut up. And I'd say it's about ten or fifteen pounds. I mean, not that much. I don't know. Somewhere's in there. Got it all cut up. I'll be breaking it up smaller when I put it in the jars and everything. Though, just wanted to show you that. Ain't it beautiful? Okay. What we'll be using in this is a quart of vinegar. A quart of water and a tablespoon of kosher salt. This is the basic brine. And I'll probably have to make more. We'll see how far this goes. I hope you can all see this. Okay, we'll start with the vinegar. I'm using white vinegar, but I usually use apple cider vinegar because that's what I like, but the store didn't have it today. Okay, that's the vinegar. Now, the quart of water. This is not chlorinated water. This is well water. We have very good water here. Now, oh, well, it's hard to get open. Okay, we'll put a tablespoon of kosher salt. Ah, maybe I'll put a little more. About a tablespoon and a half. And now we'll heat this up. I'll be right back um, when it gets heated. <coughs> okay, we're heating it up now. The brine. I may have to double this, I don't know, but I'm starting out with a single batch for right now. Because I want to pack them jars as full as I can get them. I hope y'all can hear me okay. Yeah, I'll just let that heat up. <coughs> I'm going to do.
No, the only way, what I'm doing today is I'm just putting um, cauliflower in, but you can put carrots and basically whatever you want. So I'll be back when this gets heated up. Okay, the brine's heated up now. Oops, sorry about that. I bumped the camera. Here. And start filling the jars with the cauliflower, breaking it up as I go. And I want to pack this in the jars as full as I can get them in there. And I got the my pressure canner filled um, three quarters of the way up the jar with water with a tad bit of vinegar in it to help with water deposits and stuff like that. <coughs> Poke them in there by hand. There we go. This is going to take a while for me to fill all the jars so I'll come back when I've got the jars all full and ready to go. Okay, whoops, sorry about that. There you can see I've got all the jars filled. I really had to cram to get it all in there. And the brine's back there, keeping it hot. Uh, now we'll go to um, seasoning it and all that stuff. Now, they used to say that you had to um, put all your lids in, in really hot water and all that stuff. You have to sterilize your jars, and that's all a thing in the past. You don't have to do that anymore. I don't do it, and I've been doing it for like 20 years doing it this way, and I've never had a problem. Put a little more vinegar in the water. Get that out of the way. Okay, now we'll start spicing it up. <coughs> Okay, let's wait. I'll try. No, oh, I'm okay. Oh, I forgot to show. I'll be using pickling spice too. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, I don't measure a lot, so I'm going to make a couple of these with pickling spice in. I'll just dump some in my hand here, and then put some in the top. My cat wants into the video. I'll do another one with pickling spice in it. There we go. Ah, oh, what the heck, I'll do another one. About so much pickling spice. In there. Okay. There. That one's just pickling spice. Oh, those three. Okay, the next one, I think I'll put dill in this one. I got dill that I harvested here from my cousin's garden. And, I don't know if you can see it or not, about that much dill. Throw it in there. And I'll put some in this one too, I guess. <coughs> Okay, now in one of those that I put dill in, uh, think of minced onion. I'll just dump some of that in there. Eh, maybe I'll do another one with onion. I'll do this one too. As much onion as you want in there. I love onions, so. <laughs> okay. Now these ones over here, I'll put minced garlic in there. I like fresh garlic better, but I didn't have any. <clears throat> and, let's see. I'll put about a teaspoon in this one, but not quite level. I love garlic, so I ain't worried about measurements. There we go. 
Eh, I'll put some in the, let's see, this one here too. There we go. Those who got garlic. Uh, let's put some dill, plain old dill. That garlic out of there. Get down in the hole. Oh, got to smash that one down some more. This one here. I'll just put dill in this one. Well, no, I'll leave that one clean. I'll just brine that one. It's good enough. Okay, let's start with this one then. Put the hot brine in the jar. Like I said, I'll probably have to make some more brine, but we'll start out with this one, um, this much, just a single batch. Then we'll see how much we need. I can see right now, I'm going to have to have more. <coughs> you know what, if you run out of brine, just, you got canned cauliflower. Just not pickle of the the ring on the the bottle there or glass <laughs> jar. I mean, boy, I can't talk today. Okay, let's go to the center one here. Do the same thing. I don't do things like a lot of your standard um, people do them. It's, this is not going to be USDA approved the way I do it. And I don't care about the USDA. <laughs> I care about preserving my food. And I've done it this way for years. Just to the ring. There we go. I'm going to squish that back down in there. This one the same. Yeah, I can see now I'm going to have to mix up some more brine. Or pickle, whatever you want to call it. No problem. And if you run out of pickling stuff and you ain't got enough, just fill it with water, like I said. And you got canned cauliflower. You don't need salt in it. None of that stuff that they tell you. So I come from, um, we weren't always well to do, so we had to make do with what we had. And a lot of times, carrots and um, potatoes, we canned those and stuff. They just had um, water on them, that's all. And it worked just fine. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna have to mix. Get low here. Okay, I gotta mix up some more um, brine, so I'll be right back when that's done. Okay, um, I got a batch of brine on here heating up right now. I decided to go with a double, so there's two quarts of vinegar, two quarts of water, and two tablespoons of kosher salt in there. And We'll be back as soon as it um, gets heated. Can you see it there? And then, with my paper towel here, we'll go around and wipe all the seals down. <coughs> okay. 
now I'm going to back to business. Finish and topping off these jars with the brine. And I can see right now, too, I'm going to have to take my jars out of the canner when I get done here and take some of the water out. I got a little bit too full. I forgot to allow for the jars when they're heavy, they're going to push up and try to float. So I'm going to take that off when I get done here. And uh, take some of the um, water, just a little bit out of the kettle. Or my cooker here. Is that weird? They call this a um, 17 quart canner that holds 7 quart jars. Does that make sense? <laughs> I know they count how much it'll hold uncooked food or, or water or whatever you put in there, liquid. to the next. And if you've got a lot of time in your processing, you might want <coughs> a little more water in the cooker because, like say, if you're doing beans, dry beans, they're classified as a protein like meat, so that you're supposed to do them for like 90 minutes. and your cooker could go dry, excuse me. Put the pickle here. And a little bit of um, brand that I have left, I'll use it for, um, let's see some more, for pickling stuff, just for us to eat instead of canning it. Top this one. Waste not, want not, you know. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to get this on here. Now, I've got paper towel here with uh, vinegar on it. I'll wipe off the, the things here. That was going to be pushed down somewhere. Oh, that's hot. Make sure they're all cleaned off. And then we'll put the rings and lids on it. You don't have to sterilize the lids when you're using a pressure canner because a pressure canner is actually like an autoclave. <laughs> it will do all the sterilizing for you. Like I said, I've done it this way for over 20 years and I've never had anything ever spoil. So. I'll be right back after I get the lids and rings on the jars. Here, we'll do one so you can see. Because I've got to take them out and drain a little water out of my canner. These are ball lids. Rings. You know, you really don't have to put... Um, vinegar in the water anyway because... Naturally, when you're canning stuff, some juice will come out, and it has vinegar in it, so it will get into that water. Just a note. Okay, I'll be right back when I get these all done. Okay, we're back. And we got them all ready to go now. And I'll put the canner together, and we'll get her started. And I'll come back. When it's all set. We're going to process this for 15 minutes under 10 pounds of pressure. Oh, <clears throat> and don't forget to oil your seal. It helps with getting the lid off after you're done. 
Anyone know where you, I can get a new seal for my canner? This thing is so old, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but it's a, a Miro, or a Presto, whatever you call it, Miro, 17 quart canner. So here we go. Yeah. And you don't have to cook it for 10 minutes to get it up to pressure either, because any bubbles that are in there, they will come out. Okay, now we've got her on the stove, all turned down and ready to go. We'll come back when it's getting, doing his business. And there's Mrs. Grampy Campy over there. Wave to everybody, Ma. She's sorting through her library books. I don't think she heard me. I'm trying to remember something. Oh, <laughs> we got that old timer's disease where if you do anything else other than what you started to do, yeah. you forget what you were going to do. <sighs> and there's Mrs. Grampy Campy over there. Wave to everybody, Ma. She's sorting through her library books. I don't think she heard me. I'm trying to remember something. Oh, <laughs> we got that old timer's disease where if you do anything else other than what you started to do, yeah. you forget what you were going to do. And there's Miss Daisy. Anybody know what Miss Daisy wants to do? <laughs> She's got it running right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're on the air. <laughs> Hi guys. I just want to thank everybody for praying for me. And um, I'm going to Ann Arbor Tuesday. And hopefully I'll find out if they can give me an inhaler or steroids or something. Hopefully it can help me with this coughing and stuff. Uh, um, that's what I'm hoping for. It won't be. Anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm really thankful that you're keeping me in your prayers. And I'm praying for people, too, that are sick. Yeah. So have a good night, guys. Well, by the way, this is a little shake down in my place. You can see up there, hanging from that beam up there, some of my cast iron pans. I have approximately uh, a good 20 or, or more on top of the refrigerator over there. I have a little small chicken fryer and some casserole dishes or pans that made out of cast iron. Pardon my mess. Okay, I get stuff all over. And my dog barking. <laughs> so my has to decide to play with her now. <sighs> well, back to the show. This is my house anyway. We're in the living room now. And that's Daisy. Our doggie. And there's five cats running around. Oh, if you look on the coffee table, I don't know if you can see it. But my black cat is on there making themselves to home. That's Ink Spot. And then down on the floor down there is Sylvester by Mom's feet. And then I have Fuzzy. She's a calico running around somewhere. Um, then I, and Babe. She's outside. And Bandit's outside. Well, we're back in the bed as soon as the canner gets going good. It's over there on the stove. I wish I could zoom this camera, but I can't, so you can see it sitting over there. We're waiting for it to get going. Okay. Okay, it's um, 
ready to go now. And I'm going to turn my timer on. Actually, I'm only going to do that for like five minutes, maybe ten at the moment. There we go. There we go. Here it is just the heat gun. <laughs> But you just want the jiggler, jiggling a little bit every couple of minutes. You don't want it going full tilt like that. Okay, we'll come back when it's done. When the timer goes off. Okay, uh, we got about a minute left before the timer goes off. And when the timer goes off, you just want to come up and. Um, <coughs> Shut off your burner, just shut it off. But don't do nothing with the canner. Just leave it sit there a few hours. However long it takes for the pressure to, to release on its own. There we go. Put the timer off. Shut the burner off. And walk away. I'll be back after um, the timer, you know, has went by. What you do, when it's sitting here, like say you've had it sitting a couple hours and you don't know if all the pressure's off, just go out and take that thing. If it still hits you that, yes, don't open it. And mine you can't open anyway. It locks so that you can't open it. But if there's anything coming out of there at all, don't touch it. Leave it alone. Wait longer. Because you'll come up when it's done, and you'll hit that, and it won't do anything. And then you can just take it off, and there won't be no steam coming out of there at all. And then you can open it and take your jars out. We'll be back when we reach that point. Okay, we're back. And... Just to speed things up a little bit, I'm going to do what I don't normally do, but you can do this. You take a meat fork, and it raises up your thing a little bit. Keep it on there though, because sometimes the steam will fly out and it'll get you if you're not prepared for it. When you open your canner up, Make sure you always open it away from you. If you don't want it coming up in your face. And my canner will not open if the pressure is not, um, you know, let off of it. There, it's still, still steam coming out, but then don't take, don't touch that weight with your fingers. Holy cow! It gets hot. And because I can't find my jar lifter, <laughs> I'm going to be using a glove to take my cans out. Because when we were moving, somehow. I misplaced it somewhere. I had it inside the canner, but when we got here, it wasn't in there. Don't know where it went, so we got to get a new... I'd like to get a whole new um, canning kit for filling jars and everything. Don't have none of that stuff anymore. I had to start all over. Oh, as soon as it unlocks... still locked so the steam's done coming out so it'll unlock pretty soon here. Sometimes you can hear it.
Oh, here we go. There we go. Ooh, it looks good. Smells good too. Oh, we got a leaker. I tell you not to tighten too tight, so I should have tightened that one a little bit more, I guess. Looks really, really good, though. I don't know if you can see it or not in the camera, but they is a bumping too. I hope I didn't open it too soon, but I've done it before with no problem. They usually don't take too long to seal. So I'm going to let them sit there a bit, settle down a little bit more before I try lifting them. And then we'll put them over here on this uh, towel to cool and seal. <coughs> okay, I've started taking them out. And doing pretty good. I don't know if you can see me here. You gotta go kind of fast when you pick them up with a glove on because they're very hot. You gotta be careful not to touch the seal, the lid on top. Some people go through and push their seals down. I don't do that. I want them to seal on their own. <laughs> there we go. Now we get the camera. There we have it. Pickled cauliflower done in my pressure canner. Hmm. And it looks like one of them's about ready to seal. They usually don't take too long to seal. So there you have it. In a few months from now in the winter time when you can't get cauliflower anywhere except for the California stuff that really in my opinion is kind of tasteless and you know how that goes same way with oranges and everything else up here. Everything we get comes from Florida or California or something. They don't send you the best stuff. They keep the best and send everybody else the rest. But, and then I'll take my grease pen that I have and I'll write the date and all that up there, what's inside the jar. Like, you can see it anyway, but 
maybe I'll put the flavors like this one's pickled with pickling spice this is dill you know and then the, over here's the garlic and onion that you know this one's plain pickled here well there y'all go thanks for watching and God bless you all hi homestead Tessie hi Papa been doing it cheap and, and how you doing Grandma DC and Idaho Hillbilly love you guys if you want plug your channel below, below this video I'm not in this for competition it's more like a community thanks for watching bye now